Hey everyone, this is Nick and today I'm going to take a look at macOS, but from the viewpoint of somebody who's been daily driving Linux for the past five years. Now macOS has often been taken as the master reference for UX, UI and generally is considered super simple, super easy to use, although a little bit limited. So we're going to take a look at how it works with all the bad faith and all the unjustified criticism that I'm probably going to get accused of. What I can't be accused of though is not telling you about today's sponsor, a fantastic open source office suite for Linux. This video is sponsored by Only Office, the free and open source office suite that's fully compatible with Microsoft Office documents formats. OnlyOffice has a desktop app available in virtually every packaging format you might want on Linux, but it also runs on Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. The interface is super intuitive, especially if you've been using Microsoft Office, as it's really close. And if you want to have your own Office suite in the cloud, you can also run your own OnlyOffice server and link it to Nextcloud, OwnCloud, Confluence, SharePoint, Redmine, Jira, and a lot of other services. I personally only use OnlyOffice on all my computers running Linux or otherwise, and I also have my own OnlyOffice document server linked to my Nextcloud server so I can edit documents online or offline using the desktop editors. Check out the link in the description below and give OnlyOffice a try, you won't regret it. But first, a warning, I won't be running the very latest version of macOS because I only own an old Intel Xeon cheese grater Mac Pro that was supposed to stop getting updates a while ago. While I got it up to Big Sur, I never found the time to try and update it to Monterey, so some things might not look exactly like you want them to. Still, Monterey doesn't fundamentally change the experience, apart from the new Safari tab bar, the ability to move your mouse pointer and keyboard seamlessly between multiple devices, and a few FaceTime improvements. So that won't really be relevant as this review of macOS as an operating system in itself. On to the desktop itself, the much vaunted macOS experience. Let's see how it holds up. You get a top bar and a bottom dock, a layout that's now really common and easily replicated on any Linux desktop. macOS goes for the global menu, which I like. If I have to have a menu bar, I would rather it used up the exact same spot on the top of the screen rather than have to hunt for the menu position on each window. I know not everyone enjoys that, but I always found it was the best solution if you had to use menu bars. The dock itself just hosts open applications and open windows for apps that aren't in the dock. Plus it has the trash can, recent applications, and a few nice features. You can minimize your windows to the apps icon, you can add folders for quick access to various files, or even to your applications if you add your apps folder to it. You can change the minimize effect used, automatically hide the dock, and you can move it to any screen edge except the top one. Take that, Windows taskbar. It also has one very annoying limitation. You cannot minimize an app by clicking on its icon, which is very, very frustrating. Clicking on the app's icon is much easier and a much bigger click target than that super small orange stoplight thing in the corner of the window. The desktop holds icons, by default only your disk drives, but you can store anything you want there, with a nice feature, the ability to automatically stack files by file type. This means that even if you want to make a mess over your wallpaper, that mess can still be relatively organized and usable, instead of being a huge creep of files and folders that you will never be able to sort through. The top bar also has the Apple menu for quick access to system functions, like rebooting, shutting down, the system preferences and more, and you get a clock and notification tray icons which are less a problem on macOS because they have a well-defined API for it and developers tend to care about how things look on macOS, so you rarely have a weird riot of colors, shapes and sizes up there. Unlike what you would find in the system tray on Windows or on most Linux desktops. Seriously, use monochrome icons, please! You also have a nice little control center with quick access toggles that you can drag and drop in the top bar to always get a look at them if you don't want them hidden in a submenu. Clicking on the time brings the notifications and widgets. Desktop notifications are something I very rarely use and I also have literally no use for widgets in there, but for people who want them, this is a very nice implementation, it looks pretty and it can be pretty useful, I guess. Generally, the desktop on macOS looks good, it's pretty, it's simple, it's efficient, 
And while it hasn't really changed much in the past 10 years, it's still fine. We definitely took some inspiration from it in GNOME and KDE, and that's also fine. In terms of options and look and feel, you find a light or dark mode with an auto switch depending on the time of day and accent colors, including one that is based on the dominant color of your wallpaper. Nothing very complicated here, you can't really use themes or change how the desktop works. It's a default experience with a few looks options. You also can't really change the default file manager, although you can change the default browser easily and the default apps for various file types. It's definitely not as powerful as our Linux desktops, which offer a lot more customization out of the box on KDE and a lot more options with extensions on GNOME. Finally, to run applications, you either launch them from the dock or you have a full screen app grid with search that works pretty much like the GNOME app grid. You don't get an applications menu. The closest thing you can get is dropping your applications folder in the dock and using that. It's not bad, but it's not integrated with the multitasking view, which we'll talk about later. So you can't just drag apps from the launcher to a virtual desktop to open them. You can rearrange them though into folders or change their order. Not bad, but also not the best implementation of an apps grid that I've seen. Gnome beats that handily. Finally, you get the excellent Spotlight, which lets you search for virtually anything. Files, apps, settings, web pages, you name it. Hit super plus space and you can launch anything you want. It's super handy, it's blazing fast, and it's something that we have on our distros, but less well integrated in my opinion. Now sure, you get the same features in GNOME's overview, but why open a full screen interface for this? And on KDE, KRunner is even more powerful than Spotlight, but it's so small and tiny on the top edge of the screen, why not make it more visible? Now onto the weakest point of macOS, window management. Window management on Mac coming from Linux, even from a default window manager on GNOME or KDE, is a nightmare. You get the close button, the maximize button, and the minimize button. They're all on the left, which I don't mind. The close button doesn't close the app, it closes the window. The app stays open in the background, ready to be reopened when you need it. The minimize button reduces the window in the dock, either on the apps icon or in a separate segment of the dock. If you minimize to the apps icon and you have multiple windows minimized, clicking on the apps icon will only bring back the last window you minimized. Subsequent clicks don't do anything. So to restore the other windows, you need to right click the icon and select the right window in a list. No thumbnails, no previews. That's pretty bad, but it's not the default behavior. By default, the windows minimize any specific corner so you can have multiple ones of them. So that makes it all right. No, no, it doesn't, it's still terrible. Then there's the maximize button, which doesn't really maximize. It takes the window full screen, which means your top bar is gone, your dock is gone, and to get them back, you have to hover over the top or bottom of the screen. Not great. If you press the Alt key and then click on the green button, then your window will not maximize or go full screen. It will just expand to fit as much of the content as it can, which Again, could be useful, but not hidden behind a shortcut that's never explained. There is no way I could find to maximize a window while not going full screen, which really, really sucks. Like maximizing is a basic thing to want to do with your windows without them going completely full screen. It just feels weird. And I'm sure there's an arcane shortcut that you can do with shift alt and clicking on the green button, but it's not explained and it definitely should be the default behavior. Then there's the tiling. You can't just drag a window to an edge of the screen to tile it. You have to long press the green button to access a small submenu that lets you pick an edge to tile the window. Except it doesn't do just that, it also forces you to pick another window to tile on the other half. If you didn't want to have two tiled windows side by side, you're out of luck. Your window will not stay tiled. So if you have an ultra wide display, you can't have three windows in three thirds of the screen. You can't even have a window stuck on an edge and floating windows on the other side. Probably there's another weird unexplained keyboard shortcut that lets you do that, but I couldn't find it. Why is macOS at least five years behind in that regard? Like no drag to tile is bad enough. No maximize is stupid, but also not letting you tile a window and having floating windows on the other side also makes no sense. Even windows does it way better these days. It's baffling. Now, there's a good part still, the multitasking view called Mission Control. 
You can access it with an icon on the dock, a hot corner or a keyboard shortcut. It looks like the KDE Overview effect or the GNOME Activities view, with virtual desktops on the top and all your open windows spread out. Except minimized windows don't appear here and you can't drag a window from a desktop to another. You have to switch to the desktop, which takes you out of Mission Control, then reopen Mission Control and then drag the window to the right desktop. Again, a good idea, but a half-assed implementation. GNOME or KDE beat that without any problems. Basically, window management on macOS is just bad. Whether you come from Windows or from a Linux desktop, handling Windows on macOS sucks. There is no two ways about it. It hasn't evolved a tiny bit since macOS 10 was introduced like, I don't know, 15 or 20 years ago. And I don't understand why they don't have this experience out of the box. You can install third-party tools to fix that, but why isn't it part of the system out of the box? On to application updates and installing them. Here, your default option is the Mac App Store. It's a beautiful face on a not-so-well-stocked app selection. Contrary to iOS, you can't find everything in there. For example, VLC isn't. LibreOffice also isn't, although there is a paid version in there that's not from the LibreOffice developers. GIMP, Inkscape, basically most open source apps you're used to on Linux aren't there. Probably a licensing issue or Apple Store restrictions, I don't really know. But who am I kidding? Mac users don't use these apps. They have a plethora of applications developed just for their OS, and that follows their system's conventions to the letter. So for that, the store is a good starting point. We could even learn a thing or two about how they present apps. They have editorial content, presenting stuff users might need by type of activity. They present the most used and downloaded apps first, something we still don't do. Head over to the gaming category in Discover or GNOME software. You should see Steam first, like it's the first thing that people are going to want to install in terms of gaming. But it's not there, and that's stupid. But to be fair, on the Mac App Store, Steam is also not present right front and center when you open the gaming tab, so yeah. Still, I really like the fact that they have small listicles that present one thing you might want to do with your computer and present apps that are suited for that purpose. It would be amazing to also have that on Linux to help people discover alternatives to the things they're used to on Windows or on Mac. It would also reduce the need to make videos for best apps for this thing or best apps for doing that. But that also would reduce my income, so I guess it's for the best. You get a user account here, of course, so things you bought are kept ready for you to reinstall, except if the developer decided not to update for your version of macOS, in that case you're boned and you lost your money. App detail pages are basically identical to what we now have on Discover or GNOME software. They're good, legible and useful and you can install in one click. Basically, our App Store experience is pretty close on Linux to what macOS offers, except we lack the ability to buy apps, except on elementary OS, we don't have app bundles and we can't really restore purchases or downloads uh, that we already might have done on another computer or another distribution. Now, FlatHub developers are working on the ability to pay for apps if developers choose to, and they're working on user accounts that would let you re-download stuff. Maybe they'll interface with what Elementary OS does, so the two solutions might work better together. If you can't find what you're looking for on the store, then you can still resort to the hunt online for a downloadable app solution. What you get in the process is a DMG file, which is a disk image. To install your application, you have to open the DMG file, and then drag the app, which is in a single file, to your applications folder. It sounds simple on paper, and most DMG files have some kind of visual explanation to let users know they need to drag the app into the folder. The issue here is that I've met an incredible number of people who never understood that. They open the app from the DMG image, which means it works read-only in most cases and never saves any preference. This is not a good way to install applications. Again, on paper, it sounds like a super simple solution. You double click on a file, you drag the app to the apps folder, and it's all installed, added to your menu and whatever. Except a lot of people are just not used at all to that installation method, and they just don't understand it. Why not make it simpler? You open the DMG file, you get a pop-up telling you, we're gonna copy this app to your apps folder, are you okay with that, yes or no? And if you say yes, boom, everything gets downloaded in the right folder and the DMG file is deleted. Boom, you're done. 
Of course, there's also the weird security gatekeeping that macOS is doing, showing pop-ups to let you know the app is signed by a certain developer, would you really want to run that, or sometimes just refusing to run it at all until you give it permission in the system settings. I understand the reasoning, but again, the implementation is terrible and convoluted. Still, if you can find what you're looking for in the Mac App Store, then the experience is smooth as hell and super easy. If you can't, a lot of people will just pick up on the drag the app to the apps folder and everything will work nicely, and a lot of others will just get confused, run the apps from the DMG, and then wonder why nothing works like it's supposed to. So, macOS isn't a bad operating system. Its conventions are old but work well. A top bar and a dock is a good combo. The global menu is a good solution for menu bars. It has a nice store to install apps, it has a few look and feel options, and you can extend it with a few third-party utilities to better handle its shortcomings. But it also shows its age, badly in some ways. Window management is really, really bad. Not being able to minimize a window with a click on the dock is annoying. Not asking you which window you want to restore when clicking on an apps icon is stupid. No tiling and no real maximize button means that you'll have to resize windows manually all the time, or buy a third-party utility. Mission control is good on paper, but it doesn't really work well if you want to quickly swap windows to different virtual desktops. Opening apps isn't that complex with Launchpad or Spotlight, but there is no easy way to set up your environment by dragging apps to virtual desktops, for example. All in all, the feeling I get when using macOS is that of a system that has evolved by adding features on top of each other, but that were never designed to work together at all. All these features are isolated, and I feel that in the same vein, GNOME does things a lot better. You have one single overview for apps, for Windows, for Search, for virtual desktops, and it all makes it a lot easier. You just drag your app icons to virtual desktops. You just drag Windows from one virtual desktop to another. You start typing to search. It's just better integrated and it feels smoother and easier to use, honestly. Apart from that, Apple obviously still does the store thing better than what we do on Linux. Not ethically or in terms of monopolistic practices, although they don't really have a monopoly on macOS, but in terms of how apps are presented, featured and explained, they're really good. We could learn a thing or two here. Of course, the sync capabilities and integration with other Apple devices can't be beat. We don't have a Linux ecosystem to do all that. But with KDE Connect and a Nextcloud server, you're really not that far off. It just likes the simple, easy, single sign-on experience. So, could I use macOS daily? Yes, of course. And I did in the past, back when I had a MacBook for work and at my previous job before that. I used macOS a ton, and I like that system. But nowadays, after using GNOME and KDE for a long time, I just don't really see any major advantages that I would absolutely want to use. I think that our desktops nowadays are just better integrated, the features are more cleverly designed, and sure, while we might lack a super polished app store or all the breadth of applications that you might get on macOS, I think we're still better. And yes, I would rather use a Linux desktop than macOS, but that's the conclusion you were probably expecting. I just think our Linux desktops are better thought out. What would also be very thought out would be to buy a computer with Linux pre-installed from today's sponsor. Tuxedo is a company based in Germany. They make laptops and desktops with Linux pre-installed out of the box. Their devices are sleek, they all sport a nice matte black look, they've got great chassis, great keyboard options for virtually every language, they ship worldwide, and they have a long, long range of products with a ton of configuration options for each. I used a ton of them in the past, I reviewed a bunch of them on the channel, and for example, they just refreshed their Stellaris 15 laptop, which is their high-end production station or gaming laptop. I already reviewed the previous model, but now it's got Intel 12th Gen CPUs, RTX 3080s, and a bunch of nice things, on top of its already stellar 3K screen and Opto mechanical keyboard, which is probably the best laptop keyboard I ever used, period. I'm gonna get a review unit for the new model soon, and I might even buy it to use it as my main production device when I'm on the go. So if you need a new device running Linux out of the box, check the link in the description below, click it and see what Tuxedo has to offer. I'm sure you'll find something that suits your needs. 
Now thanks everyone for watching the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment, to click on the super thanks button to give me a donation, and if you didn't like the video, you can also dislike it and tell me why in the comments. If you want to support the channel, you can join my Patreon subscribers or my YouTube members. Both get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. So thanks everyone for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!